the equation from the last video can be used directly to find an equilibrium constant. At standard conditions, that equation can be rewritten as this. Your free energy under standard conditions will equal the negative RT ln of K, where K is your equilibrium constant. So this is a relationship between Gibbs free energy and an equilibrium constant. Once again, let's take an example from the text. This is problem number 71 from the back of the chapter, and this is an equilibrium we've actually looked at before. This is the nitrogen dioxide gas coming to equilibrium with dinitrogen tetroxide gas. You're given the values of delta H and delta S under standard conditions. At 25 degrees Celsius, you're to calculate the equilibrium constant. The assumption that we're going to make is that delta H and delta S are independent of temperature, that they stay constant. We're then asked to estimate what the K value would be at 100 degrees Celsius. So we're asked to do this problem twice, once at 25 degrees Celsius and once at 100 degrees Celsius. In both cases, we're going to use this equation, delta G naught equals negative RT ln of K. At 25 degrees Celsius, the first thing we have to do is we have to find the delta G. So I'm going to use Gibbs equation. I'm going to say delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And I have to be careful with my units. I've got kilojoules and I've got joules. So I'm going to say delta H is negative 58.03 kilojoules per mole minus the temperature. So 25 degrees Celsius in Kelvin is 298 Kelvin and then times delta S. Now delta S is in joules, so if I write that in kilojoules, that's going to be negative 0 0.1766 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin. My Kelvins cancel out, so I'm going to get delta G equal to negative 5.40 kilojoules per mole. So now I can plug in to the equation that we learned earlier. I can say delta G, negative 5.40 kilojoules per mole, is going to equal the negative value of R. So for R, I'm going to use 8.314 again, but that's in joules, so let's write that in kilojoules. So that's going to be 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin times the temperature, which again is 298 Kelvin, times the natural log of my equilibrium constant. So if I solve for K, I get 8.85. So let's try this again at 100 degrees Celsius. So in the problem, we see that the delta H and the delta S are temperature independent. So they're not going to change at this temperature. So again, if I find my delta G, I'm going to say delta G equals delta H, negative 58.03 kilojoules per mole, minus the temperature. Now the temperature is no longer 25, it's 100, so my temperature is 373 Kelvin, times that same delta S, and again I'm going to express that in kilojoules, that's negative 0 0.1766 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin, and so now my delta G is going to equal 7.84 kilojoules per mole. So now this is interesting, right? At 25 degrees Celsius, I got a negative delta G, which tells me the reaction is spontaneous. At 100 degrees Celsius, I get a positive delta G, which tells me the reaction is not spontaneous. But if we look at our messages, I've got a negative delta H, which is good for spontaneity, but a negative delta S, which is bad for spontaneity. Right? These are the mixed messages that we talked about the other day. Now remember, if you have a negative delta H and negative delta S, those reactions tend to be spontaneous at lower temperatures, but tend not to be spontaneous at higher temperatures. So somewhere between 25 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius, this reaction switched off and became non-spontaneous. All right, let's follow this up now. We can find the K value. So I'm going to say delta G, which we found to be 7.84 kilojoules per mole, 
is going to equal the negative value of r, and again I'm going to express that in kilojoules, 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin times T. And again we're going to use 373 Kelvin times the natural log of K. I get K equals 0 0.0798. So in that example, we calculated two delta G values. We calculated a delta G value that was negative and a delta G value that was positive. The delta G value that was negative gave us a K value greater than one, which makes sense because if the delta G is negative, that means the forward reaction is spontaneous or the forward reaction is more likely to occur than the reverse reaction. Well, we said already, if that's the case at equilibrium, then our K value would be greater than one. Conversely, when we saw that delta G is positive, then the K value is going to be less than one because the reverse reaction is the more spontaneous one. If delta G equals zero, then neither the forward nor the reverse reaction is particularly favorable. That's when your K equals one.